Are you guys okay? I think we all need to do a little deep breathing after that heart attack of an ending to the game yesterday against Atlanta. Welcome into a Victory Monday Tory Take presented by Priority Health. I'm Tori Petri. Like you guys, I'm still trying to make sense of what we just saw in that final minute of the game. It's one of the crazier endings to a game we've seen in a while. But like, it was the Falcons. Of, of course it was going to be insane. You had the redo walk-off field goal in London 2014, the 10-second runoff game in 2017, and now this one. Why are these Lions-Falcons games so weird? Just when you thought this year couldn't get any crazier, Lions-Falcons enters the chat. This game was so 2020 that the biggest play of the game for the Lions somehow was giving up a touchdown. Yeah, Matthew Stafford and company were lights out on their final drive, and we will get to that, but really this game turned when Todd Gurley accidentally scored in the fourth quarter. All the Falcons had to do was eat up clock and kick a field goal to win. But instead they scored, which meant the Lions got the ball back for Matthew Stafford to work his magic and drive down the field for the winning Lions score. That was some heads-up defense from Detroit. Gurley tried to pull up, but he just couldn't in time, and it was a touchdown. It really is a game of inches, and... Well, the inches swung the Lions' way this time. My favorite part of this game was what TJ Lang called Vintage Matthew Stafford on our postgame show last night. I love it. That is a dude who genuinely loves having the ball in his hands in high-pressure situations, and it shows. You could tell in his post-game press conference that he was just on cloud nine from that finish. He threw a sidearm rocket to TJ Hawkinson for the game-tying score, and on National Tight Ends Day, no less, and you could tell he was just loving life. It's great to see him getting his groove back after that injury last season. When Matthew Stafford is on, there are few QBs in the NFL that are more fun to watch. Another guy we have to talk about today is Kenny Galladay. The man is unstoppable. The way he laid out to catch that pass in the second half, taking a hit from a defender while he was in the air, is elite stuff. We know Kenny is in a contract year, and while that pressure is a lot for some players, he's thriving. Two weeks in a row of 100-plus yard games, impressive catches in each of them. The man is trying to secure the bag, and I respect it. One small note before we move on to your questions. That Lions win over the Cardinals is looking all the more impressive after Arizona took down the Seahawks in a thriller on Sunday Night Football last night. The Lions are at 3-3 three and three now, and they're headed back home with a decently favorable schedule ahead, and I'd say they're in a good spot, all things considered. Okay, let's move on to your questions. Our first submission is from Mr. Whippet, who says, Okay, I have a boatload of questions. Number one, what was the flag for that was picked up at the end of the game? Number two, why was Amendola penalized when at least two Falcons had their helmets off? And number three, Kenny Galladay is an all-pro. That's not a question. All right, first off, I agree with you on point number three. To answer your first question, the flag wasn't picked up. It was an illegal formation penalty on the Falcons for the extra point. It was obviously declined by the Lions as they won the game. Two, Amidala was penalized for unsportsmanlike conduct, so clearly the officials saw his move as a move of excessive celebration and, and not the Falcons. But listen, guys, this is not the game to get worked up over officiating. The Lions won. They had a few calls go their way, so just enjoy it. Next, David McCluskey asks, did Harris know what he was doing and let Gurley go? It almost looked like a missed tackle. Did the coaches actually say, let them score? Well, David, Matt Patricia told Sports Illustrated's MMQB that yes, he did indeed know what he was doing and allowing the Falcons to score there. That's some heads up coaching. Football Twitter was abuzz a couple weeks ago with Mike Vrabel's sneaky move to allow his team to take a too many men on the field penalty as a clock management strategy a few weeks ago, whether he was willing to admit it or not. And this falls in the same vein. Our last question comes from Mexico, which I love. It was submitted in Spanish by William Chivas, and I'm not going to try to pronounce the Spanish, but I will use the translated version of the question, which was, do you think we can finish with a winning record? Greetings from Mexico. William, thank you so much for following along with the Lions from Mexico. I love it. Secondly, I think the Lions have as good a chance as ever sitting where they currently are in the season. They're at 500 now, heading back home to take on the Colts, followed up by games against struggling Minnesota and Washington teams. The schedule favors them right now, and if they keep improving as they have these last couple weeks since the bye week, they've got a shot. Finally, we'll wrap things up with a little bit of fun as we take you to our extra point. You guys know I love a good NFL meme, and this one actually came from the Lions-Falcons game, courtesy of one of my favorite Twitter follows, Mina Kimes. Falcons owner Arthur Blank was on the sidelines Sunday, kind of looking like a movie villain, which Mina captioned, Bring me the Batman. Y'all, I laughed so hard at that. Another noteworthy 
Coat News, the Detroit Lions Twitter account changed their profile picture to this Photoshop of Matthew Stafford looking baller in a fur coat, and I am dead. Nothing like a little bit of victory Monday fun. Thanks, guys, so much for hanging out with me on Tori's Take, presented by Priority Health. I will see you right back here next week. From Xfinity Studio, I'm Tori Petri.